thanks for thanks for joining us. I'm Kaylee. Hi, Kaylee. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet I have you. to say, I'm a fan for several reasons. Um, one being, I have been on a party barge that has asteroids. <laughs> I have jumped off the bed of a pickup truck at a bonfire to run from the cops. <laughs> and um, I grew up every Sunday morning going to my grandparents' house for lunch after church and eating fried oh, chicken. Oh, that's awesome. So, your songs, definitely, um, several of them, hit a, hit a note in, uh, in my life. So, real life stuff. So, real life stuff, which is what you do so well. Well, thank um, you. What? Tell me about your songwriting process. It's got to be, obviously, it's very organic for you. It is. It, it's, it's, I try to do it, uh, keep it as simple as I possibly can. Um, the, the objective is, as a songwriter is to write a song that other people get to show a movie and tell their story in an hour and a half or two hours. We have three minutes to tell yeah, that same it. story. So uh, so that's what we do. So I just try to keep it simple and I write and sing and uh, record songs that are about everyday life. The same stuff that people go through every day. And you grew up in Nashville, so this is something that I think is, must have just been in your blood, right? Uh, well, yeah, it's definitely in my blood. My dad was a bass player. I was born in Nashville, grew up in the town. Uh, so music was always a big part of my life. Uh, a, a story, a true story, when I was about 12 years old, I went to a, a field trip with a school, a place called Cheekwood, and I sang the national anthem, and I did it that time just to impress the girls. Nice. But, uh, did it uh, work? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it's working pretty good. Uh, no, uh, a, a lady by the name of Minnie Pearl came up to me, and she says, young man, someday you're going to be a famous country singer. Of course, What I was Minnie Pearl doing there? She was out at Cheekwood uh, visiting. Uh, she, she used to go there and visit herself. Uh, it was the time of the year when they would show Christmas trees that are decorated from around the world. Uh, so, but many years later, uh, I'm inducted into the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, but prior to that, my very first visit, uh, I was in dressing room number one, which had this right huge on the first picture floor. So of Minnie Pearl. Uh, yep, and then uh, I was inducted into the Grand Ole Opry as a member on Minnie Pearl's birthday. It's amazing how things can come yeah, full circle. So that's it was a, a lot bigger picture than that's me. That's a really, really neat story. And now you're on tour with Carrie Underwood, we which are. has got to be one of the hottest tickets uh, as far as the country music concert circuit goes. How did you pull that off? How did you and Carrie get hooked up to do this tour together? Well, we were dating for a long time. Yeah, so. No, no. Yeah. And then she got engaged. And <laughs> then she got engaged and blew it out. Yeah. And my wife found out about it. And oh, it was horrible. It got no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, Carrie and I have known each other uh, for a little while well, since she's come into the business. Um, She's an Opry member, I'm an Opry member, but what really made it happen, someone in her management seen one of my shows, and, and when they started talking about the tour and putting it together, and they had names, a list of names, my name was on that list, uh, and because of, I think, our Opry relationship and so on and so forth, she picked me, and here I am. Very cool, very cool. So what's the next stop on the tour? Like, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't know where you wake up the day We're, after that uh, either. Yeah, I really don't know until like the day before. Um, then I start looking at it and checking it out. A lot of places we've played in the past, uh, so it's a lot of fun to go back to places we've played. What are some of your favorite venues to play? Uh, these venues that we're playing right now are about my favorite. Yeah. They're, it's a happy medium between the, the theater, smaller theater crowds, which are a lot of fun, they're a lot more intimate, uh, but there's also the energy of the great big crowds when you're playing for 50, 60, 70,000 people. Those are, are obviously huge, high energy shows. Exactly. This is kind of a happy medium, so you can talk a little bit and you still have that energy. So we're, you know, like last night I think we played for about 10,000 people. Oh, we, they've got to grab your mic. You're still wired up from the uh, oh. show upstairs. So Love we're going to just slip, slip that <laughs> well, off. Well, and Mike's, so I'll just share the website expert. with the folks so uh, well, you can there see you that... Uh, Make it down to DC? Uh, no, no, we're not. No. We're not in DC on this trip. We're doing 50 shows, 54 somewhere. That's there. in how many nights? How long? In about 90 days. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot, a lot of traveling. Yeah. You got a pretty cool bus. Uh, yeah, we got a couple. They're parked yeah. out on the street. Oh, really? I'm going to go check that out. <laughs> yeah, go check that we, we have to get the Backstage Live tour of the rock and roll buses. Cause, cause all Absolutely. The I'd be glad to take you there. back and let you see the bus. Absolutely. That would be yeah. very cool. You can come check it out. All right. Yeah, we're gonna take you up. On yeah, that. come on. Excited. We have coffee made. And how drinks does it? And... How does it work? You know, when you're on tour, I know you have a family. Yeah. Um, what's that like? Do they come meet you out on the road? And that's funny. You should ask. My son is flying out today. Oh, that's uh, exciting. He's, a, he's uh, how in old school. Is he? He's 18. He and his girlfriend are gonna fly out uh, and and meet us. I think they're flying into Hartford. Uh, and I'm having a car pick them up and bring them to the show. And he's gonna stay with me this week. We're up in Canada next week for a couple well, couple days. And, 
Uh, it's his spring break, so he's coming out to visit. That's a pretty cool way to spend spring break. Yeah, it, it'll be fun. I'm just excited to be able to see him because, you know, they come home on the weekends when they're at school and I'm on the road working, so I seldom see them. So it'll be fun. Uh, next year, my wife and my two little, I got two little boys, a uh, 12 and 13 year old, uh, that are going to come out and spend some time with me on the road next year. Oh, that's fun. And Craig, before you got onto the country music scene, at least in this big of a capacity, I mean, you had a you had a whole nother life, yeah. and, and a pretty great pretty great story. Ten years in the service, yeah, about, almost eleven years, ten and yeah. a half years in the army, uh, and it was a, an amazing time in my life. I was very blessed. I tell people that the army was was uh, boot camp or training for the music industry. <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's a bit of a reality. I mean, it really was. It prepared me. And I, it, obviously, I think it made me a better person. It gave me a great deal of appreciation for how good we have it in this country, being able to go over to other countries uh, and experience their cultures and, and see some of the hardships that they are, they are going through uh, and being a part of, of maybe helping to overcome, help them overcome some of their hardships uh, has gave me a great deal of appreciation for how good we have it in this country. And, uh, yeah, so it's a, it was a real blessing to be able to do those things. And is that where you started your songwriting, or was it... Earlier than that. Oh, it was much earlier, much than, earlier that. than that. I started. I thought I was writing songs when I was about 15 years old. <laughs> they were just really bad poems, is what they were. Uh, you but you know, through, that's exactly right. You have to start somewhere, and that's where I started. I started writing what I thought were songs, and uh, during my time in the military, when I was away from home in places like Korea and Panama and Iraq and, and uh, different countries, being away from home, uh, I, 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 that was kind of an outlet for me to be able to write songs. Uh, based on things that I miss the most, which end up being some of my biggest hits. Not songs that I wrote then, but just talking about the simple things in, the, in life here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you sang Bonfire earlier. We did. And I think you're going to be doing an encore later, Redneck Yacht Club. We're going to do right? Redneck Yacht Club, everybody. I'm sure that's always a hit. It is. It's fun. What are, what are your favorite songs to play on tour? I mean, what for you are the ones that really get the crowd going and the ones that really get you, you know, intimate with the crowd? The hits. <laughs> Uh, any of the hits, you know, because the people have heard them. That's the big thing. Uh, we have a pretty good fan base. I mean, we've sold a million records. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that have heard the other songs that weren't hits. Uh, but there's a lot more people than uh, the ones that have bought my record that come to the shows, especially on this carry tour. There's a lot of people that have never seen Craig Morgan in concert. So we, we try to play all the hits that they've heard. Um, and then we try to play some of the new stuff that's on the current CD that they uh, and try to encourage them to go buy that. Now, can we expect any duets with you and Carrie to come out of the store? Yeah, we're we're doing a duet about every third night. Uh, she she has me out and we do a duet together on the stage right towards the end of her show. What do you do? Uh, it's really kind of up to the crowd. She does a thing that the, her fan club picks what format, what genre. What's, and, then, and then down to what song. So I think last time we did a uh, Alan Jackson's Neon Rainbow. Oh, that's fun. So Yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. Who have been yeah. your inspirations in country music? Well, I'd go way back to uh, the likes of John Conley, uh, Jim Ed Brown, and then Vern Goss and Gene Watson, George Dion, Way Tweedy, a lot of the older guys. But then as much as I love all the traditional sounding music, my show is based kind of around something like a Garth Brooks meets James Taylor, meets Luther Vandross, meets George Jones. <laughs> right. I know, and what's it, what's it like having those inspirations in your background, but then, you know, being on tour with somebody like Carrie, you see how successful Taylor Swift is, you know, it's sort of a new wave of, of country music. Where do you sort of see yourself fitting in? You know, country is, it, but country is a very broad format, unlike other genres of music. Country, you can, it, there's music that might sound a little pop, and then there's hardcore, traditional sounding country. I'm kind of in the middle. Uh, which has been real blessing for me because you know the, the the hardcore will come and go and the pop will come and go. It's those guys that are kind of in the middle that seem to mainstay and have long longevity in, the, in their careers. So that's what I'm hoping for anyway. <laughs> so are you working on any new songs right now? Yeah. Uh, my, do you get the time to write when you're on tour? I write time? when I'm on tour. I do most of my writing when I'm on tour. I have writers come out on the road. Uh, they'll fly out and meet me and hang out on my bus and uh, we'll write out there. Uh, my drummer and I write a lot together. Um, he and I just finished a song that's going to be on my new record, uh, written with a couple other guys. Um, actually, my fiddle player was a, a writer. He didn't really write much on it, though. He just kind of hung out. No, I'm kidding. That was a joke. It was his idea. I think. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. but yeah, I do most of my writing on the road, but I got a song that we wrote that I'm real excited about you, for the next record. Can you tell us anything about it? It's called I Don't Know How to Love You Anymore. Uh, and it, you know, basically it says, you know, I miss the way you used to let me love you, and I miss the way that you used to hold my hand. Uh, I, it's been so long, I don't know what love feels like, uh, but I'm still holding on. Are you already gone? 
I don't know how to love you anymore. Uh, do we know what we're even fighting for? Yeah, God knows I can't love you any less. But I don't know how to love you anymore. I think that's going to be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to feel that heartbreak or has felt that at some point, I would guess. Um, well, great. Well, Craig, thank I have a couple you questions. So much. Yeah, we've got chat room questions. Yeah. Great. Um, so we're live on the web, yeah, if, we, awesome. if we didn't really explain that to you earlier. And we've got a chat room going, so Rick's going to share some yeah. of the questions we're getting. So uh, Angus asks, you know, um, related to what you're just talking about, your, your next work, what do you, do you think about the future? Do you have a vision of where you, where you, you want to be um, down the road from here? Angus, do I think about the future? When? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm always, uh, uh, you know, six months a year ahead in the record industry process. Right now I'm writing, uh, I'm, I'm about to go in the studio and start recording a new album for next year sometime, maybe late this year. So yeah, I'm always writing for that next project. I'm always thinking about the next project. I'm always working on what's gonna happen to improve my show. Uh, you know, we're in the entertainment business, so we entertain people, so we're always trying to improve ourselves and our show and our presentation. Mm -hmm. And um, a question about your um, style. Do you feel that uh, country is coming back to its roots with your songs and Jason Aldean? I don't know how to pronounce his Jason name. Aldean. Yeah, hmm. Jason Aldean. Jason Aldean. Don't, I don't think country's ever left where it's at. Like I said, the, the great thing, what can be greater, some people could think it's bad, is how wide this genre is. It's a real, we cover the gamut. Uh, I don't think we ever left the roots of country. Uh, and I don't think we ever will, but we do have that. We do tend to swing back and forth. So, uh, and and right now we do. I think we're swinging. We're going to. The pendulum is going to start swinging back towards a more traditional. When you had the likes of Jamie Johnson uh, with in, in Color, that song that was such a huge, such huge, a huge hit. hit. Hardcore song. Uh, and now my new single, This Ain't Nothing, which is turning into a, looks like it's going to be a big old hit. And it's a you know fairly traditional song. Um, it, we. We just have to make sure that we don't lose that, and I don't think we ever will. Like I said, I don't, I don't think we've gotten away from our roots at all. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Craig. I really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun, and uh, if you're around later, you might come check out the bus. Yeah, I'll see you all on the bus. <laughs> okay, great. Thank, thank you, you so much.